Hey there everyone, thank you all for tuning in to my latest video review of NECA's Pacific Rimline for the Kaiju Trespasser. For those of you that have been following my videos or even the ones that are new to my videos, you'll know that my first Pacific Rim Series 1 video was um, all three figures. My Series 2 was all three figures. But with Series 3 having four figures and all of them being a little bit more expensive than the past, I have to take it a little bit slower and these videos will probably come one at a time. My local comic shop had both kaijus in stock, but again with the price I only picked up Trespasser as I do have the Series 1 knife head and I just love Trespasser. He's one of my favorite kaijus and I had to pick him up. Now sorry also with the glare and the lighting, this is the best um, with the situation here in Southern California today. It's a little bit gloomy and I just want the best natural light um, to work on it as you know artificial light isn't always the best for certain situations. So let's get right into the figure. First you'll notice as NECA has done in the past the big clear um, glass case style opening. You know just showing the full body of the kaiju of this figure. At the bottom you'll see it says kaiju trespasser with his little happy face right there posing for a screenshot or for a uh, headshot. And then at the top, kind of hard to see at the angle, I'll try to bring this down. You will see it says Pacific Rim with the little logo from Warner Bros. Pictures and Legendary Pictures. Now first off, you know, this is just like the leatherback packaging. You can already tell this is a massive figure. The entire packaging is just huge and at the side you can see how big he is too with the little uh, the spine or the backpack, whatever you want to call it there. And on the back you see Trespasser in all his glory, ready to attack, and at the bottom seeing collect them all with all four figures in series three. From left to right, we have Coyote Tango, Knifehead, Cherno Alpha, and Trespasser. So let's open this guy up and we'll check. Trespasser him. has been opened up, and I am in love with this figure. A lot of people were complaining that he is the same sculpt and the same design as Knifehead from series one. Yeah, there are some similarities like the arms and the tail, but he is Trespasser, he is not Knifehead. So, you know, as with all the Kaijus, there might be some that are similar with each other. And for me, just think of, it, think of him as a brother. Like, you know, brothers have, brothers, sisters have, you know, some similarities. They might have the same eyes, the same hair. That's what I'm going to think about for him. So before I get into the actual figure, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do some comparisons with other the other figures in the wave or in the uh, Pacific Rim line So here we have Trespasser and then here is Leatherback Now I can't remember quite exactly which category um, Trespasser was in but he is about the same I guess the same size as Leatherback um, you know, of course, Leatherback has the big belly, the, he's more muscular and everything. And Trespasser has the big hump on his back, the uh, axe or whatever you want to call that little part on his head. Um, kind of like a shark or a uh, hammerhead shark. Um, but, you know, overall, with the actual back, oops, let's see if we can get him to stand now. He's a little bit hard to pose due to the uh, differential in the weights on different parts of his body. Don't know what I'm saying right now. Come on here. Okay, well, I'll just hold him up for now. So as you can tell, you know, he is about about the same width, I guess, um, with each other, just, you know, how massive Leatherback is. And then with the backpack, he is actually maybe a little bit bigger. And then height-wise, you know, in these positions as Leatherback stays, he is about the same height, you know, with the arm. Put the arm down here, you know about the same height and I'll try to do a little side to side you know he does kind of cover him up so not much to uh, miss there there we go sorry if it was blurry getting in focus but you know they are about the same size and they're both massive figures I mean I guess they could have left Trespasser about the same price as Leatherback but you know there are a lot of more features and a lot more plastic in it. So, and this guy just does not want to stay up. There we, nope. There we go, he can rest on his tail for now. So, now I'll bring in the Gypsy Danger from Series 1 
which was the non-battle damage, just, you know, the 1.0, I guess, if you want to call them. And standing next to him, you know, about maybe the same height standing up. Um, you know, of course, the hump and little knife on his head make it a little bit taller. And then, of course, with the width or with the overall size, he is quite massive. And the hand, you know, the hand just goes right on top of him. The hand is massive, too. And then all three of these guys compared in size. So, you know, very good scale. Um, I'm not sure how. I know NECA's been teasing about a Gypsy Danger 2.0 who's going to be taller. Not sure how that's going to throw off the scale or, you know, what will happen with that. But overall, I am very happy with how Trespasser is in size. I'm glad they made him in comparison to Leatherback. And I'm sure the new knife head is also in comparison with both of these guys. So let's get these two out of the way. Bye bye. See, that's the great thing too. I'll quickly touch on that. The articulated jaws making them happy to see each other. Or, you know, even Trespasser, he's always smiling. They're both always smiling. They're just happy kaijus going about their day. So here we have Trespasser again. I'll do a quick articulation check. So both arms twist up and down. Um, they do go out. Ooh, I actually just checked that. I didn't notice that earlier. Both arms do go out quite a bit, you know, like he's going to give you a big hug. There we go, and come back in and twist all the way around. He can't go all the way back because of the little spikes or the horns that are on his um, hump back here. But he can go back all the way around. So pretty good, almost a 360 articulation. At the elbows... Um, they do not twist, which I'm a little bit disappointed at, but they do go up and down. Um, the wrists do twist, and they do twist, sorry. And they have, seems like they're on a ball joint, so they twist. They can go a little bit in, um, but again, these are hindered by the actual placement of the wrist and the hand. Um, so same on this side, you know, in and out, up, down, up, down, twist. And then these little T-Rex arms here. They can twist back and forth. Um, they do go in and out as well. So that's really cool. You know, plenty of articulation there. No, not really an elbow joint. So it's just that one that's connected at the ribs. And the hands to twist around and a little bit back and forth. And same on this side. I also love how at the waist, there's almost like a waist swivel. That can go pretty good almost all the way around. At the thighs or the hips, they go up and down. Again, a little bit hindered due to the position, but, you know, you can still pose them. There is knee articulation, twists and goes back and forth. And at the feet or the ankles, they can go side to side. A um, little bit up and down, but, you know, you can put it at any angle to uh, make him stand, depending on which position you want him in. Want him in. And the tail is just a soft rubber. Um... Not sure, I actually just noticed that. Not sure if that's supposed to be ripping right there. Um, doesn't look like a big deal, but you know, it could just be part of the paint or from bending it. Seems like there are a few cracks, maybe the mold didn't settle in time, but you know, no big deal there. And also, the head can twist pretty far up. Um, it goes a little bit up and down, not too much, you know, again, hindered with the neck and position, but you can get him to go up and down a little bit, and the mouth does open and close. Now, I know with the new knife head, the tongue is supposedly retractable, I think, but this one, the tongue just seems to stay in place. Overall, the figure, you know, great paint app, great feel and texture to it. They have, you know, the yellow veins or um, stripes going through it. It's overall kind of like a grayish blue tone, um, a little bit of green here and there, and then the chest has like the brown beige paint to it, a um, little bit of beige paint stripes and detail here and there. Not sure how well you can see it in the video, let me see if I can get that focused, um, but there's the beige like around the scales and the skin, um, I guess around the cracks, almost like the grout throughout his scales. And then on the back, you know, the hump, it is a solid piece, you know, I mean, it's not soft or anything, you can't really move it, um, and it is just solid. It's one big mold, and great paint app too, really looks like a leathery skin, and al almost the same feel as the rest of the figure, just not as scaly, I guess, and of course the uh, darker gray and the brown and the more black horns coming out here. So there's another view. 
and the side and the tail and then also the uh, not quite sure you want what you want to call this whether it's the axe the hammer um, whatever you want to call this on his forehead and then you see the little spikes coming out here in the back too but great great detail I mean I love what they did with this instead of just painting it you know all yellow they did almost like the veiny look to it the thread look um, coming in let me try to get that closer in the video try to get some nice light on there if you can see that there you go there's some nice so you, know, you can see like the light blue and green and then the more um, matte yellow almost the goldish yellow it is darker than the yellow stripes here these are more a brighter yellow um, and these are just more mixed in with the brown and green and blues so it really really looks good and in the mouth as well you can see the orange and yellow lips and tongue well the tongue is red but the gums and everything and the teeth you know the teeth are actually pretty sharp if you put your fingers on there so here we are everyone the NECA Pacific Rim Series 3 Trespasser I you know for all the Pacific Rim fans I highly recommend this and let's see if I can get him to pose one last time for you guys there we go and oh, let me get him into focus too so, a little bit of a difficult review, but hope you guys all enjoyed and come back for my next video coming up shortly. Thank you all for watching and stick around.